Well, if you if you just tuned in, uh, unfortunately, I'm sorry about that. I'm just going through last week's lesson, so um, you're not missing much. So Coalesce seems to be touching on the following. If a person takes God out of labor and activity, life or events really become random instead of fixed or appointed. That the things that God has given us, he has given us, he has fixed them for us to do, okay? For us to complete, for us to enjoy. The quality of the good becomes subjective and quantitative if God is taken out of labor and activity. In other words, we may view ourselves as the more that we do these things, the more good that we feel that we are. But that's not really how we ought to look at them. If God is in labor and activity, things become objective and qualitative. These things are qualitatively good. Therefore, we should do them. Right. Activities become meaningless or pointless, just as Koheleth underscores in chapter two of Ecclesiastes, right? If you do these things uh, in and of themselves, they become meaningless and pointless. But with God, they become meaningful and purposeful because God has given those activities for you to do, right? If God, if God is taken out of labor and activity, time becomes temporal and insignificant. But if God is placed back in, knowing that these events are the things that God has given us, time becomes intentional and meaningful. And especially in light of, we don't get a lot of it. And last, a person's pleasure is the only objective as God is taken out of labor and activity instead of a person's pleasure and recognition of who gives that pleasure to you. God desires us to be delighted in our activities and have a favorable disposition to what he has given to us. Okay, let's continue. Chapter 3, verse 15. Let's go ahead and read the following here. That which has already been, or that which has been already, and that which will be has already been. For God seeks what has passed by. Let's look at the first part here. I just want to make a quick comment here about this first half of this statement here that Kohaleth makes. The first half of this statement underscores the permanency, constancy, and consistency of things under the sun. I will keep referring back to this all the time, is that humanity is always looking for things beyond the ordinary, always. And that's not what God has, at least according to Koheleth, has told us that man ought to pursue. Man, according to Koheleth, ought to pursue the ordinary things, the things, the mundane things the regular things, the vanilla things. Koheleth has already made similar statements like this in the previous chapters of this this, uh, account here. For example, in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 9 and 10, Koheleth writes this, that which has been, or that which has been, is that which will be. And that which has been done is that which will be done. There's no such thing as a new thing. It's just an old thing with a new name. That's all it is. There's nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one might say, see, it is new. Already it has existed for ages, which were before us. Right? Again, we're always looking for the new and improved thing. The new teaching. The new new insight. The new deep thing when that's not the case. There is really nothing new. Again, it's just an old thing from it by a new name. That's all it is. Then a Koheleth, as it's a completed statement here in uh, verse 15, says something rather curious. He says, for God seeks what is passed by. That's kind of fascinating, right? God seeking something, right? Let's talk about this statement for a minute. The word seeks is the Hebrew word bakash. Okay. Bakash. It is is a verb. 
and occurs 200 times. Yeah, we should look it up. Unless it's a. Uh... Okay. If you recall, uh, the yiktol, the the manner has to do with more of how an action took place rather than when it took place. So it really is arbitrary about whether or not it took place. Uh, um, you know, uh, 
a week from a week from then, a month from then. It's more about how the action took place, that God is continually seeking according to Kohalath. This idea here that is mentioned within this particular text that uh, that that Kohalath is saying that God is speaking is that everything that God uh, there is that everything um, the idea mentioned is that everything that God continues, he continues to seek. There is no end to this process of his seeking, quote unquote. Okay? We'll talk about what this what I believe that this this statement that Koalith is getting at in a minute. Um, pass by Radaf. Now I know that that may look like Radaf, but it's not. It's Radaf. Okay. Af. Radaf. This word is a verb here, and it occurs 143 times in the Hebrew scriptures, occurs once in the book of Ecclesiastes. And it uh, means to pursue, to run after, or to follow. Okay, it's used in various areas in that, in that regard, and depending on the context, it is translated in this way. The word is in the passive, the nephal stem, okay? In this, in the book of Revelation, a uh, book of Revelation, <laughs> book of Ecclesiastes, holy smokes this morning. I should have, I should have had a cup of coffee. Um, this word is also a participle, which means when you uh, have this particular participle and passive in the Hebrew scriptures, it becomes an adjective a descriptor okay so it is describing these type of events these things that have passed by god is seeking so what is kohalef's conclusion what point is he making by saying that god seeks that which has passed by it's really kind of a cool phrase kohalef by his statement and the and the one before this continues to point out again that there's no such thing as new and improved when it comes to the activities of humanity. This is hyperbolic language, a hyperbolic statement, a statement of exaggeration that, that Kohalath is making to emphasize that even God doesn't seek out new things. He doesn't seek out what's new and improved. But he intentionally wants to find those things that have passed by or been there, done that. If God doesn't seek out new things, how should we seek out things? Again, this should give us comfort knowing that our lives and the events that take place, those activities that, that occur on the land of men, under heaven, that if we're doing those things and we're doing them well, that should comfort us knowing that God has given these things to us for, the, for us to do. Again, I find this statement to be rather comforting. Verse 16 says, furthermore, that is, moreover, I've seen under the sun that in the place of justice, there is wickedness, and in the place of righteousness, there is wickedness. This is an interesting statement. Let's take a look at uh, some, of the, uh, some, of the, uh, some of the details of this text here. The word for justice is the word mishpat. This word is a noun, and it is means uh, it, uh, it comes from the root word sapat, meaning to judge, to govern, to vindicate, and in some, uh, some uh, context, to punish as well. This word mishpat, or justice, occurs six times in the book of Ecclesiastes. Okay. And in this context, and also from the perspective of the administration that we are looking at in terms of where Kohalath is and how God is relating to them as a nation. His word is talking about actions that align with reality 
and even more so specifically the law of Moses, right? 